morning, everyone. Welcome back to today's message, and today we're going to talk about baptism of Holy Spirit. Now, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, maybe not everybody knows about baptism of Holy Spirit. Many people know about uh, water baptism, but baptism of Holy Spirit is something different. All right. Now, the question is like, is it important? Um, is it the same as being born again? The answer is, it is very important. But it's not the same as born again experience. So being born again and baptism of Holy Spirit, those are different experiences. Now we're going to look our Bible from John chapter 20. All right, let's open our Bible from John chapter 20. I'm going to read from verse 19 to 22. Okay, I'm going to read from New King James Version 19. Oh, by the way, if you read your Bible, it is very important to know the setting of the story. Now, this John chapter 20, it took place on Sunday after Jesus rose again. I mean, Jesus died on Friday and Sunday, on Sunday, he rose again. Now, let's read from 19. Then, the same day at evening being the first day of the week, the first day, that means Sunday, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Now, can you imagine this? These are his disciples. They were afraid of Jews. Why? Probably they said that, okay, they killed Jesus. Probably we're next. So they were afraid, they assembled together in one place, everything's closed, everything's locked, doors locked, windows locked, and all of a sudden Jesus appeared in the midst of them. And Jesus said, peace be with you. 20. When he had said this, he showed them his hands, his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Oh, this is the real Lord. Okay. Now 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. No, he was about to send them. 22. And when he had said this, now watch this. We're going to highlight 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now you see this? He breathed. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. This is the moment when they got born again, when Jesus breathed Holy Spirit on them. Now, similar thing happened back then, 4,000 years before this moment. If you go back to Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 7, when God created the first man, Adam, and he breathed Holy Spirit into his nostril. Remember that story? Genesis 2, verse 7. Oh, you can go back to that story. Now, again, Jesus had to do the same thing. He breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. That means they received the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. That means they got born again. But what happened next? All right, let's go to Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. The promise, capital P, the promise of my Father upon you. That means Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the promise. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now, wait a minute. These people, these people, his disciples, got born again. Remember, John 20, 22. Jesus breathed this Holy Spirit. So they got born again. But still, Jesus said, don't go anywhere. Stay here in the city of Jerusalem. Just don't go anywhere until you're endued with power from on high until you are empowered but they got born again already remember that but still they had a way why because they need power now let's go to the book of acts chapter one it's very interesting very interesting story acts chapter one now, of course this is after the resurrection now i believe that you know already that uh, jesus rose from the dead on sunday and then he still walked on earth 40 days before he ascended to heaven and then after that another 10 days and then he poured out his spirit the pentecost day right i believe you know all this thing right this is acts chapter 1 let's read from verse 4 and being assembled together with them 
he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Now, it's a similar thing. Do not go anywhere. Just stay here in Jerusalem. Yeah. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. That's verse 4. Now, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Now, from this verse, we know that there are more than one baptism. Because Jesus said that John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Talking about the baptism of Holy Spirit. Now, let's drop down to verse 8. This is very important. We're going to highlight verse 8. But you shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now you have to see this carefully. You shall receive power when. Not if. When. You know, some translations say, okay, if. But this is when. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Remember. They got born again already. But they still need power. You shall receive power. They haven't received the power yet. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and all and to the end of the earth. So in other words, all right, you got born again. Okay, this is to the history stuff. Okay, boys, you got born again already, but still you need the power. You need to be empowered before you start ministering. I believe you know this already. At this point, I believe you got something. Even after we get born again, we still need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now remember, those are two different experiences. Born again and baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the question is, why do we need power? Where does it come from, the power? The power comes from the baptism of Holy Spirit. So from this verse, we know that the baptism of Holy Spirit is for power, for the empowerment. Again, why do we need the power? To be witnesses, we need the power. To do the ministry of Christ. Doesn't matter what kind of ministry that you are doing, but you need the power. This is Jesus Himself saying to His disciples, Wait a minute, don't go anywhere until you are endued with power on, from on high. So, you know what I mean? They still have to wait for the power. Now, let me say this again the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for the empowerment. Born again is the initial moment, the beginning of your journey with Holy Spirit, with God. Because when you get born again, you receive Holy Spirit. But when you are baptized with Holy Spirit, you receive the power, the empowerment. So, what's going to happen next? Now, if you read the Bible from the book of Acts, chapter chapter 2 onwards. Let's, okay, let's, let's just read chapter 2. Okay, this is about the Pentecost, the day of the Pentecost. I believe you've heard this. The day of the Pentecost is the moment when they are baptized with Holy Spirit. Now, Acts 2, okay, chapter 4. I mean, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the moment they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And after this, miracle after miracles after miracles, even performed by his disciples. Now, folks, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not only born again experience. Born again experience, one more time, is the initial moment. It's the beginning of our journey with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit dwells inside us, given to us, but still we need the power through the baptism of Holy Spirit. All right, that's it for today. I believe you get something out of this. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless.
and God bless you. See you next time.